This day has brought terrible news and great sadness to our country. GC flight. GC flight. Flight GC. Lock the doors. Copy. Fido, do you have any tracking? No, sir. Lost contact with our space shuttle. Hold on to your seats, space enthusiasts. Today, we're about to unlock the darkest chapter of our space exploration journey, the worst space incident in history. So let's begin. Space mission Columbia STS-107 was returning to Earth after performing 80 groundbreaking experiments in space, ready to push the boundaries in human history. This was all accomplished in only 16 days. The clock was ticking rapidly. Only 22 minutes were left for the Columbia STS-107 mission to reach the Earth on the verge of making a success in the history of NASA. The seven powerful and heroic crew members smiled with pride and accomplishment on their lifted faces. It was 8.40 a.m. when the happy and excited crew members donned their suits to re-enter Earth. At 8.44, the Columbia STS-107 pierced through the Earth's atmosphere, and only 16 heart-pounding minutes were left to culminate this incredible mission. Everyone at the Kennedy Space Center was excited, yet terrified, with eyes on the screens. There were questions in every mind. Will this mission be accomplished or face doom like the Challenger disaster? The controllers here looking very carefully at the situation. Obviously a major... Will it be a terrible day like January 28th, 1986, when the rocket faced an explosion just after it took off? Or will it be the beginning of a new story? And then everything turned into a disaster. Within a few minutes, this almost successful mission turned into ashes, and the Columbia STS-107 was destroyed, brutally killing all seven crew members. But what happened to the Columbia shuttle? Was NASA already aware of this upcoming mishap? What errors and tragedies led to this worst space incident in history? This was not a tragedy that happened in just 22 minutes before landing. Instead, it was a chain of events that NASA might have taken for granted. Let's rewind things from where it all started to fill up this puzzle and get the answers to our questions. After Columbia's previous successful space mission in 1997, NASA decided on another space mission in 2001 that was supposed to perform numerous experiments on space. However, this mission couldn't be launched in 2001 because of the multiple malfunctions in the Columbia Space Shuttle because of its prior space missions. This malfunction led to the cancellation of this mission almost 18 times because NASA wanted to be 100% sure and safe for its mission. But who knew that even after repairing and adjusting Columbia, it will still face a disaster? Finally, when NASA was satisfied that the shuttle was ready for the space mission, the Columbia STS-107 mission was rescheduled to have the space mission finally. On January 16th at 7 a.m., the seven crew members were getting ready for the remarkable 113th space shuttle mission by NASA. The Columbia Shuttle was the oldest of the fleet that took part in the 113 missions, and this was Columbia's 28th and last mission. The seven remarkable astronauts chosen to give this considerable responsibility included Rick D. Husband, who was 45 years old and given the responsibility of commanding Columbia. He and his wife were supposed to celebrate their wedding anniversary one month after his return. He had always dreamed of going into space. First time Rick figured out that he wanted to be an astronaut when he was four years old. So this was a goal. And exploring his hidden abilities to bear the harshness of such missions. The second astronaut was William C. McCool, a marvelous athlete and a U.S. Navy test pilot. Next is David Brown, who was a top-class fighter pilot and Navy flight surgeon. Then, Blair Sultan Clark, who was having her first space trip and was a former Navy commander. 
Clark was a specialist in diving assignments with the U.S. Navy SEALs. She was the wife of John Clark with an eight-year-old son and left both in despair after this mission. John talked about her enthusiasm. She applied when she was pregnant with our son, so she goes to the application process six months pregnant. She had immense belief that she would get through this. On the fifth anniversary of the Columbia incident, John stated his emotions on what happened. So you have to find something positive, in, even in something tragic. Otherwise, you can't move on and you can't. On number five is Michael P. Anderson, who was an Air Force Lieutenant Colonel. His son still remembers him today after 20 years of Columbia's mission. As he talked with NASA. Yeah, no, it's, it's weird. It's hard to, it's one of those events. There's not a lot of people that you can relate to or, you know, <laughs> so it is kind of. Ilan Ramon was the Israeli Air Force Colonel and the first ever astronaut from Israel, as no man or woman had ever stepped in space before him. So it was a remarkable journey for him, but sadly, it ended with the worst space incident in history. Kalpana Chawla was a flight instructor and scientist of Indian origin, the first Indian woman who was lucky enough to take her second flight on the Columbia STS-107 mission, with the previous Columbia mission being her first space mission. Everything went well, and the Columbia shuttle spent almost 16 days in space during the STS-107 mission. Once all these seven crew members tightened up their boots for the mission, the mission started. If everything was going well, what happened almost 22 minutes before the landing of Columbia? Almost at 8.54 a.m. on February 1st, when Columbia was returning to Earth, suddenly, out of the many sensors on the Columbia shuttle, there was an alarming reading from one of the sensors. The crew members felt a drastic jolt to the shuttle, followed by severe trouble in breathing. It was reported from the shuttle that I have just lost four separate temperature transducers on the left side of the vehicle. Four temperature transducers have lost. These transducers were supposed to convert the excessive thermal energy into mechanical or electrical energy. The shortage of oxygen from the excess of external gases entering the shuttle and excessive temperature caused all shuttle members to faint with a very high body temperature. This high temperature caused the blood of the crew members to boil, giving them the worst death. Columbia was near Dallas then, traveling 18 times the speed of sound with a 61,170 meter distance from the ground. Mission Control from the Kennedy Space Center made several attempts to contact the astronauts, but failed. Columbia Houston, UHF comm check. And then, even before the experts at the Kennedy Space Center could have thought about anything, there was a considerable shuttle explosion, leaving behind nothing but white smoke. Years passed and nothing was known for sure what caused this unlucky disaster, destroying the Columbia Space Shuttle and killing these seven crew members. However, after a successful investigation, NASA found that a foam strike happened just 82 seconds after the launch of the Columbia mission. This piece of foam fell from the bipod ramp. After the investigations, when the video from the launch of Columbia and the pieces of destroyed Columbia were investigated carefully, it was seen that the piece of foam struck the left wing of Columbia, creating a hole when it was taking off. The destruction of Columbia might have already happened a few seconds after the launch, yet it kept on moving and even spent 16 days in space successfully. However, when it was returning home, the hole in the left wing allowed the atmospheric gases to bleed into the shuttle, leading to the loss of sensors eventually destroying Columbia and killing the astronauts inside. So, could NASA have made preparations to prevent this disaster from happening? 
Was it possible to save the lives of these seven lively astronauts? You'll be surprised with the answer, but yes, it was possible to save lives of these seven people, if not of the priceless Columbia Shuttle. How? Several people and experts in NASA suggested taking pictures of the breached wing when it was in orbit, as it was already noticed that something did strike during the launch. The orbital spy cameras were there that could have taken a closer look at the issue. Yet according to the Columbia Accident Investigation Board, it was reported later in 2008 that the NASA officials in charge declined this offer and preferred to continue the journey of the shuttle without any considerations. This has left a lesson for NASA on all future shuttle missions that even a tiny hole in a space shuttle shouldn't be ignored, as it has the power to destroy the whole mission, causing such sad days for NASA and hurtful futures for the families of the astronauts who die in such missions. We are sure you learned a lot during this journey of the worst space incident in history. Do you agree that the Columbia Shuttle could have been saved if NASA had been more careful? Share your thoughts in the comments below.